Welcome back to Chem Exam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In today's video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry 2020-12, Unit 1, Module 1, Number 1. Let's go. 1A. With the aid of an example, define the term dative covalent bond. Same thing as coordinate bond. A dative covalent bond is one in which both electrons in the shared pair comes from the same atom. We normally denote the dative bond with an arrow. Let's look at what a regular bond is as compared to a dative covalent bond. So in a regular bond, both electrons in the shared pair comes from each atom. So here we have H with one electron on the valence shell. Here is another H with one electron on the valence shell. They both combine to form the bond. Now, when you come on to your dative covalent bond, the electrons from the bond comes from one atom. So they are not sharing from two atoms. So the electrons in the dative bond comes from one atom. So here you can see that in H+, plus, which is the proton, its orbital is empty. So the lone pair on nitrogen will share with the H+, plus, giving the entire molecule a positive charge. And so we go from ammonia plus the proton to give you ammonium ion. So that's our example. We have another example here with water bonding with again a proton and one of the lone pair of electrons will share with the, the proton into its empty orbital. So both electrons in the shared pair is coming from the oxygen atom. None is coming from the H+. Part B. Intermolecular forces of attraction influence the physical properties of substances, such as their melting points, boiling points, and solubility in polar and nonpolar solvents. Consider the structure of the following substances and answer the questions which follow. Here we have A, propanone, same thing as acetone. B, one propanol or propan one ol and C, butane. You are to place substances A, B, and C in order of increasing boiling point, starting from the lowest. So looking at these, we must first identify the type of bonds present so we can rank them from lowest to highest. So we'll start with C due to the fact that C is your intermolecular forces, your weak intermolecular forces called van der Waal forces or temporary induced dipole-dipole force. The next one is A, which is your permanent dipole-dipole force. And of course, the one with the strongest intermolecular force of attraction would be B, due to hydrogen bonds. Part 2. Identify the intermolecular attractive forces found in each of the substances in B1 above. So we already said that C was temporary induced dipole, induced dipole force. A is your permanent dipole, dipole force. And B is hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. Now let's look at each of them. If you're looking at A, we know that the C and the O, which is the carbonyl group, is polar. So the C is partially positive and the O is partially negative. So if I combine two molecules of propanone, you'll have the O bonding with the C. So here we have the force of attraction. It's not an actual bond, but the force that they feel. So the negative O will feel a force of attraction with the positive carbon. In propan one ol or one propanol, you'll see that the H in one molecule is feeling an attractive force with an electronegative element in another molecule. And in this case, the electronegative element is oxygen. But remember, you have oxygen, you have nitrogen, and you have fluorine. Those are the electronegative elements that we must pay attention to when it comes on to hydrogen bonding. For butane, which is our temporary induced dipole, induced dipole, or you could say temporary induced dipole, dipole force, same thing called van der Waal forces, you can see here that when the molecules are far apart, the electrons are 
evenly distributed throughout. But once the molecule move close to each other without touching, you feel now an attraction between the molecules due to the polar bond that is now formed and it is a temporary bond. So once the molecules move away again, the electrons will be evenly distributed once more. Part three, describe the origin of two of the intermolecular attractive forces named in B part two. So the first one is our temporary induced dipole forces. And these are due to the instantaneous dipoles formed by the shifting around of electrons in nonpolar molecules. So we say that the nonpolar molecules is because we have even distribution. But once they come together, you now have a temporary attraction because you have now a positive side and a negative side. So you create a temporary dipole. So the induced dipole in each molecule causes the attraction. For permanent dipole forces, now these are due to the differences in electronegativity of atoms within the molecule. These dipoles attract each other. And you saw earlier when I showed you propanone that the carbon is partially positive and the oxygen is partially negative. So these dipoles will attract each other. So the negative oxygen would be attracted to the positive carbon. Part C, complete table one by indicating whether each of the substances, potassium bromide, acetone, and solid iodine are soluble or insoluble in two solvents, water, which is a polar solvent, and toluene, which is a nonpolar solvent. So here we're looking at table one. We have our substances, potassium bromide, acetone, and solid iodine. We are going to see if they are soluble in water or toluene. Remember, water is polar. Why? Because you have two sides to it. You have the negative side and you have the positive side. So the negative side is where the oxygen atom is, and the positive side is where the H atoms are. And remember that we now have a dipole. Now, the reason why we say that the oxygen is electronegative is because it attracts the electrons in the bond closer to itself and away from the H, making the H partially positive and the O partially negative. So we know that ionic substances would dissolve in water because water is polar. So water will dissolve either substances that are ionic or polar. Toluene, which is methylbenzene, is nonpolar. Therefore, you don't have any charge to pull the ions apart from an ionic compound. So in this case, looking at potassium bromide, you'll see that it is an ionic solid. So in water, the negative part of water would surround the positive part of the ion, and the positive part of water would surround the negative part of the ion and pull them apart. And that's how we have substances like ionic solids dissolving. If you put the ionic solid in toluene, because toluene is, is nonpolar, it would not pull the ions apart. Therefore, the solid would be insoluble in toluene. Acetone, which is propanone, is polar because of the carbonyl group. So the O is highly electronegative, so it pulls electrons towards itself and away from the carbon. That is why the O is partially negative and the carbon is partially positive. Now, water being polar will dissolve polar substances. And so acetone would be soluble in water. Now, you'll notice that they have here that it is also soluble in toluene. And that's because of the nonpolar part of the molecule, which is the, the methyl groups in this case. Let's look at solid iodine. Now, this is simple molecular. So we are not concerned with the intramolecular forces. We are concerned with the intermolecular forces. The intra forces would be between an I atom and another I atom. But notice the force we are concerned with here is the force between an iodine molecule and another iodine molecule. So this is considered to be simple molecular. Now, if you are a simple molecular, you will not dissolve in water but you dissolve in the nonpolar toluene. 
This is the end of module one, 2020-12, number one. Please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you will be notified. Thank you.